Did you take a test on the day of the debate, I guess, uh, is the I bottom line? I probably did, and I took a test the day before and the day before, and I was always in great shape. Thank you very much. I have to say, you have a great smile. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, Habibis. It's another Habibi Power Hour. I'm Siraj Hashmi. I am Mujahid Kobe. Welcome, Habibis. How are we doing? How is it going? Oh, we got we got like three or four Allah Akbar's from Billy Finn. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, I forgot to change the background. Damn it. Let's do that right now. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, why is it so dark in here? <laughs> <laughs> where there's sand. Uh, where there's sand. How's um, it been going, Habibi? What's been new? You know, um, I got Ernie with me. Do people want to see the urn right now? Let's see him. Screw Let's it. See him. Let's do it. Let's do it. Nice. Earn and time early. right now. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's do it. And that's right. I am in Fuzzy's mom's room. But oh, there we go. He's here. It's a Dude. treat for everyone involved. Boy, and the funny thing is, before he came on camera, he was just looking himself off. Yeah, I mean, I figured he was best to bring for this uh, particular, um, uh, this particular segment because um, we want to talk about how everybody's so horny on Maine, <laughs> especially this guy. So. That's our jihad on tap the way we start. So, <laughs> right off. Really? And, I mean, we were contemplating coming on here with our dicks out just to, you know, to, to you commemorate know. this moment. But yeah, absolutely. I think we talked ourselves out of it. I mean, huh, we have basically done all the motions of what we're about to talk about. <laughs> Uh, you know multiple I, times I, on this show you know, i was gonna say let's start with rudy giuliani i don't even want to do that let's just start off with the the elephant the elephant in the room with the thick rimmed glasses <laughs> free tubin of cnn and speaking of glasses i'd like you with glasses oh thank you habibi they're like my gamma ray glasses i could take them off Ooh. so you could look deep into my eyes and ernie's eyes ernie look yeah, in the camera bud He's not going to pay attention to me anyways. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, Jeffrey Tubin, uh, everybody knows the story, but for those who don't know the story, holy shit, we got a story for you. This um, is a crazy one. So Jeffrey Tubin, for those who aren't familiar, um, is the CNN legal analyst and also uh, a staff writer for the New Yorker. Or is it New and, York Magazine? It's the New Yorker. New Yorker. So, and, huh? he fucked, and he fucked somebody's daughter, like his friend's daughter, and forced her to have an abortion? Yeah, that was that's old news, you know? We already know. I know, him. but I like to put that in his bio, Like, No, no. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you put it in there because he is a shitbag, uh, and he's a horrible human being. Um, but the reason why we're talking about him now is, I guess, because a lot of the takes that were put out today um, sort of lead me to believe that maybe Tubin's career isn't really over and let's just get let's just like get you know lay the foundation here you know unzip the pants let's unzip <laughs> unzip the pants lay the foundation right, right. You, you know Ern's gonna mark his spot <laughs> right on me so the new yorker said on monday that it had suspended jeffrey Tubin, its staff writer after he exposed himself during a Zoom call last week with employees of the magazine and WNYC radio, according to two people familiar with the call. Staff writers at The New Yorker and employees from WNYC, which jointly leaves the magazine's podcast, were on a video call prepping for election night coverage, according to Vice, which reported the episode. Uh, they first reported the episode. 
During a pause in the call for breakout discussions, Tubin switched to a second call that was the video call equivalent of phone sex, according to the two people familiar with the call who spoke on the condition of anonymity. Uh, I probably said that like you said. And on it, I must be getting the J team right there. Anonymity. Anonymity. Fuck, whatever. We're going to just keep rolling. Uh, ask Monday afternoon. What's that? Anonymity. Anonymity. <laughs> it's going to gonna be like this the whole fucking night. Yeah. I, I mean, we're going to have to do that segment where I just ask you what, how to say this particular word. And just, to, just get, that's, that should have been the word, but I fucked it up. We should. Anyways. <laughs> We should have the Habibis bet on like how I would pronounce the word in the closest yeah, one. Yeah, we'll probably have plot. to let the Habibis decide which um, word tonight they're going to use. Anyways, back to the story. So asked Monday afternoon about reports that he had exposed himself. Tubin said in the, st in the statement, quote, I made an, embarrassing, uh, an embarrassingly stupid mistake believing I was off camera. I apologize to my wife, family, friends, and coworkers. Okay. And he continues on saying, I thought I had muted the Zoom video. I thought no one on the Zoom call could see me. Later, though, it was reported that he didn't just expose himself. Uh, he, he whipped his dick out and began masturbating on the Zoom call while he thought the camera was off. And basically stroked like no one was watching. <laughs> and i'm just trying to figure out did he get inspired by us let me let me uh, this is the time in which i'm going to go look for old tweets of a <laughs> stroke in it <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna have to rely on one of the habibis to find it no, it's probably in um it's probably buried in the oh, oh no yeah. no it's in it's in it's probably it's in, in fuzzy's <laughs> in fuzzy's uh, library he likes to watch me stroke it off it's just like there, his mom <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> <laughs> i'm watching it and no one else can see it so let's just pull it up is it is it add to the stream there you go, go. <laughs> <laughs> of course it's fuzzy it had to be fuzzy, fuzzy. you know I have to say that maybe Jeffrey Tubin is actually Jeffrey Tubibi. Tubibi. He's been watching the Habibi Power Hour. He got inspired by us. <laughs> He's just watching our form and just like using it. <laughs> he thought, you know what? These guys are doing it and, and they're not going far enough. So I'm going to go the extra mile. <laughs> just whip it out. <laughs> Don't do it. I, will I mean, essentially... you, get, you get. I don't understand how how he could have thought that he was off the stream. Either you exit out of it, or I mean, there's lights. It it shows that it's recording. It lets it lets you know. I just. Yeah. I don't fucking wow. get it. This you can't give boomers access to computers like this. You yeah. just can't do it. They're going to want wind up having their dicks. <laughs> out on a, on a conference call with everybody there. And you know what's funny? I'm pretty sure because of who he is, everybody all there already knows that he's a fucking disgusting piece of shit. And now they have to listen to what kind of porn he watches too. I bet it's like little midget Mexicans or some shit that, that you hear in the background with donkeys in it and shit. Can I just say that this screen record that we got going on right now <laughs> as, as we go is on. making me laugh harder than anything else that we've ever done. <laughs> it's it's not bad form. <laughs> and the it keeps looping. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have it with like different different songs in the background. We need yeah. to have it with with Habibi and Nurain on it, with like fucking oh that that um what's it called? What's the song that's out again now that that keeps on going? Wop. Um, no, not WAP. It's it's an oldie. It's now a new a new. It, it's come back oh, on the oh dreams by Fleetwood Mac. Yes, somebody needs to put dreams by Fleetwood Mac in, Wet in here. Dreams. <laughs> there we go. That would be way too good. Yeah, it would be um okay i guess we should go to the story that really been um on the minds uh of everyone today and that is 
the case of Rudolph Giuliani. Uh, <laughs> do the Habibis want me to turn off this particular screen? Because I could keep it going all night. It, it can keep it going. I mean, especially <laughs> if we're talking about people touching their dicks. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, all right. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna remove this for a second. <laughs> we can talk about Rudy Giuliani. Um, so everybody knows who Rudy Giuliani is, the former uh, mayor of New York City, who's now President Trump's personal lawyer. Um, apparently, fell for a Sasha Baron Cohen prank on his latest film, the sequel to Borat. And to be honest with you, Jay. Um, when I saw the original previews to Bor the second sequel of Borat, wasn't really that impressed. I was like, this is going to suck. Right. Now with this episode, I kind of want to see it. And the reason for that is, uh, so NBC News, they attained a copy of the, of the film. And right. Giuliani and a young woman posing as a reporter who was part of Cohen's sting uh, can be seen going into a hotel bedroom for drinks at the woman's invitation after completing mm -hmm. what Giuliani uh, apparently believed to be a real interview about the coronavirus pandemic and Trump's response to it. The incident occurred as Giuliani was trying to remove his microphone with the help of the actress, which had been used as part of the movie's interview with him. The film, which is being released Friday on Amazon Prime Video, shows Giuliani re reclining on a bed and then putting his hand down his pants and moving it around for what appears to be a few seconds while the actress playing Borat's teenage daughter, Maria Bakalova, uh, who's 24, who is pretending to be a television reporter, stands in front of him. At that point, uh, while uh, Giuliani and the woman uh, recording, who are being recorded by what seems to be a, a hidden camera are, are eventually interrupted by Cohen, who bursts into the bedroom in his Borat persona shouting, she's 15, she's too old for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Giuliani quickly sits up and appears startled by the presence of Cohen, who wears a pink outfit that resembles lingerie. Giuliani asks him, why are you dressed like this? Cohen, as Borat responds, she's my daughter, please take me instead. Giuliani replies, I don't want you. He then makes his way out of the hotel suite. So Giuliani, uh, you saw there's all these images going around Twitter. Right. And it looked like it was in a very compromising position. Um, right. And this is what uh, oh, this is what Giuliani had to say. Let me go to it because it's gonna. You should you should show the picture too because as Fuzzy yeah, mom let's, as let's Fuzzy's mom the, would know, that's exactly what I look like right before she walks in. <laughs> all right let's see if let's see if i can find it real quick hold on one second why can't i find it god damn it uh, all right let me share the screen we're gonna just scroll through this together see if we got it it's literally gonna if i don't see it in the next few seconds you got, right, you got i gotta go it right now i gotta type in borat great <laughs> there it is there it is this is the first image all right touching hands that looks like it's the interview uh -huh. then it looks like a shot of a camera going through a mirror or something like that yes and then he's reclining that that's the image that really has been circling around everywhere um and you could see his left hand is reaching into his pants and his right hand is propping up uh, that little opening right there. So, right. and then, oh, yeah, well, we know about that. So after that, Giuliani then goes uh, and tries, he, he tweets through it like any uh, rational person, anyone who's, you know, pleading innocence would normally would do. do. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the banner real quick just so that Habibis can see it. Um, so Giuliani says in a thread, the Borat video is a complete fabrication. I was tucking in my shirt after taking off the recording equipment. At no time before, during or after the interview, was I ever inappropriate. 
if Sasha Baron Cohen implies otherwise, he is a stone cold liar. He sort of continues on to say it was, you know, like kind of exaggerated editing. Um, mm -hmm. And as soon as he realized that it was a sting, he called the police and it was noted in a reporter article on July 8th. And um, kind of, I mean, look, it's a comedy film. Uh, I'm sure it was suggestively edited to make it look even more comedic. Um, right. But uh, Jay, uh, first of all, does this make you want to see the movie? Uh, not so much. I mean, wow, you're a thief of joy. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, the only thing I'm saying is, I'm still gonna watch it. That's for sure. The first Are you watch was it together. Great. Yeah, you and me naked. Can we, finally, like the way Rudy Giuliani was supposed to be. Right? No, we can really we'll watch it in the onesies. Hell yeah. The Borat onesies. That's how we should we should watch the uh, debate tomorrow too. Oh, for sure. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I think I have a I think I have a set of onesies. Ernie, you got a set of onesies. No, I think uh like Borat does cringy, not Borat, but uh Sh Shasha Cohen. Cohen. He does cringy comedy really, really well. I still yeah. I still till this day laugh at his joke in Ali G when he's like, it's like the Mecca to the Jews. When he was talking about when he was talking about the like the YMCA or, or the 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 center uh, that he had where kids would go and he'd had like a little teaching class they were gonna they were gonna demolish it and he's like this place is is like the mecca to the Jews for these kids when he was trying to like tell them not to take it down I thought it was fucking hilarious he did that movie was was good yeah no I like you know I actually typically like Sasha Baron Cohen. I guess I got worried in the beginning when I first saw the uh, the trailer for this particular Bora that it was going to be like very like resistancy cringe, you right? Know? You know, just how like every you know a bunch of comedians that used to be really funny just sort of you know they regressed into being like hyper partisan. Like Patton Oswalt is like a really good example of that. Like uh, after Ruth Bader Ginsburg died he like tweeted out how he's not going to be doing comedy for like the next like what 42 or 46 days until the election and everyone's right. like oh well, looks you know we were really missing out on a lot <laughs> and it's just like that that's like <laughs> resistance comedy is just not i mean you it's not funny it's the it's the lowest common denominator uh lowest hanging fruit type of shit no, it really is. I mean, the only thing you have from that side is uh, what's her name, and and she just like lip syncs Trump and shit. I mean, the funniest that you have it right now is like South Park, but the other side hates South Park because it goes after both sides. Oh, I love South Park. But when they South make Park fun of Trump, of the, South Park, I agree, has been one of the few um, comedies that has weathered the weathered sort of like this era really well and in fact actually i would argue has improved in the trump era right i think so they're the only ones who have because the thing is is that they're still not afraid to go after the other side either mm -hmm. to, to showcase like how fucking stupid now and, and and out of control now like so far they've gone trying to to be against trump mm -hmm. and they're not afraid to to go after it and yeah. they're not afraid to go after the right either and that's yeah. why it's really really good i tell you what i actually like a few months ago i had like a i had like a really um kind of weird dream in which i um felt like sort of like the need to go reach out to to matt stone and trey parker and collaborate with them and mm -hmm. like i still want to do that i feel like that would be a lot of fucking fun oh not that i like find myself really funny but like that would, I, I feel like maybe there's something there. I don't know. I have no idea how to reach out to these guys. So um, <laughs> anyways, uh, so yeah, there's, you know, Rudy Giuliani. I'm just, I, I'm holding out and waiting to see the actual film itself. Well, apparently um, a lot of the people who've seen it, like Yashar and some of the other people, they, they're saying that Rudy is right, that they're actually agreeing with his his side and his story oh i don't doubt that for a second um i trust the people who's act who have actually watched it i think ben right. just had the first tweet i saw initially yeah um and essentially 
100 percent. fuck yeah you bitch yeah yeah now you're drinking a man's drink let's see how you like it <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna 100 get you fucked up tonight <laughs> don't because my wife will get home soon <laughs> <laughs> She's not gonna like it. Uh, no, I'm gonna, gonna pull up Andreas's <laughs> tweet just so that Habibis can see it, um, because I thought it was um, it, it's important to see people who would typically want to dunk on uh, on Rudy Giuliani, um, who say actually, you know what, this is completely blown out of proportion, and um, this is this is what I'm talking about. Let me add it right now. Um, so Ben Dreyfus says, I've now seen the scene with Rudy Giuliani. And though it is creepy for other reasons, it is being described on Twitter in a false way. He does not have his hand down his pants in a sexual way. He is tucking his shirt back in after she untucks it, removing his mic. He continues on to say, also, the bat thing is a joke. She prompts and he politely agrees. The scene is confusingly edited for comedic purposes, and like I said earlier, um, which makes sense since this is a comedy film in 60 minutes expose. It would be good to keep that in mind in light of the flattening of media where everything can seem like everything else. And he finishes off by saying there are parts of this scene uh, that are creepy, though. Uh, in the same scene, he pats her on the lower back in a very weird way. You'll be able to find stuff you don't like watching it. But I do not think the description of the hand in the pant thing is fair. So there you go. You know, yeah. even even the libs would uh, agree that this is all an exaggeration. So mm -hmm. uh, no horny jail for Rudy Giuliani. If anything, um, he gets off. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> uh, no, he didn't mm. get caught with his hands and down his uh, pants. This um, time. But let's talk about another, um, another, I would say, entity because this isn't a person um, who is now <laughs> standing on trial for being horny, and that is Fort Bragg in the North. Whole <laughs> the whole the whole fort the whole fort and i bring every that up. person in it there is a there is no person it is literally an anthropomorphic fort that has now become super horny so let's go <laughs> ahead and show the habibis what we're talking about so this is the very first thing also look at that nice let's look in on that zoom there you in. go you see that? How many likes? That's nice right there. See that? I see it right there. No, I got it. You, you it's didn't essentially, say it's a, I did three times, 100%. but you didn't hear me. Why am I saying 100%? You're encouraging it. I told you I'm getting you fucked up. We really are flipping roles here tonight. Yes, sir. Anyways, so this um I don't the only the only thing is I don't have the whitest team I can find as a t-shirt to put on though. Are you saying that my New England Patriots football t-shirt is the whitest team? Whalers, New York, uh, do you the Patriots, the Whalers, all of them. That's racist. Super racist. Anyways, um so I'll get to that in a second, Nate BB, but let me let me get through um the Fort Bragg. The, uh, Fort Bragg. So this random woman on Twitter who has an OnlyFans because everybody has OnlyFans, but uh if you ever look through her Twitter, um <laughs> I don't know why she needs an OnlyFans or why she <laughs> to pay for an OnlyFans because she's putting it all out there for everyone to see. So this what woman Quinn. Say? writes bro infinity why you subscribe to my only fans if you hate pubic hair why bro why fort bragg replies he's lost and doesn't know a good thing when it's staring him in the eyes or tickling his nose in this case and <laughs> i bring this up because this is the perfect time to bring it up jay when did you hack into the fort bragg twitter account okay okay this is, this is your fucking okay. mo all that, the way. That's the only thing that 100%. didn't happen is he didn't talk about eating ass, which I think you did intentionally 
to not have anyone on your tail on your trail but i can see right right there. okay no you got me so you that's number me. one and this number two okay a little bit not safe for work so habibis if you are um streaming well, this work. Censored, so whatever so habibis you're getting you're getting that in your face anyways so fort bragg replies to this my faces then my boners and then my faces again before i come up to give you a long deep kiss like what the f dude you, <laughs> that's that's creepy that's, that's so horny, horny. creepy holy yeah. shit <laughs> yeah like i don't even text fuzzy's mom like that like that is <laughs> fucking wow well we all know your moj we know this is you uh anyway you're getting me so, so <laughs> Brad, is... basically their entire account went under like they deleted it or they like nuked it um but right before they nuked it i think they said they were hacked and of course like i'm sure there was like one particular user of the uh for brag account for brag who was just like you know what i'm just gonna hop in this girl's dms i'm a i'm <laughs> for brag <laughs> so uh, yeah it's not just one dick in those dms no it's not anyways nate bb thank you nate bb um so quick update on earn ernie is fine. so there's nothing you have to worry about earn um he went to the vet yesterday and he has he's like has some allergies he's taking antibiotics right now um but he had like these like little sores on his on his skin and i got really worried <laughs> And so he's taking antibiotics now. Um, the worst part, though, is that he now weighs the same as Gracie. And they're both 15.4 pounds. The okay. He is fucking thick as fuck. So he is going on a diet. Yes. And I am. I walked in twice today. There you go. Huh? I said, there you go. You're getting yeah. yourself yourself going too. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm well, fuck you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you straight up. Um, I mean, so you essentially look good. One hundred percent. I swear to God. <laughs> you piece of shit. Anyways, Ernie's doing fine. His spirits are up. Yesterday he was a little tuckered out, and I, f I felt really bad, and I was really worried about him. Um, because you know, I mean, he's eight years old. They ha he had the veterinarian exam that he had yesterday was called a geriatric exam. I'm like, oh, come the fuck on. <laughs> <laughs> Can he not catch a break? And he went to the when he went to the um, what's it called, the beauty parlor the last time. My brother in law picked him up. And uh, from the beauty parlor, like one of the apparently one of the workers there uh, was like admonishing him and called Ernie, I shit you not, a coffee table. That's insane. Yeah. So, so yeah, Ernie. He, he needs, as he much needs as I love you can see, of, look at that back end. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. So he's gonna, he's, he's got a, He's got to go on a on a diet. You know, he's he's actually doing really well on walks. He used to not be very good at, on them at all, but now he's like built some stamina. Um, and uh, you know, so long as we're consistent, you know, I'm I'm telling the Habibis now, um, so that uh, to hold ourselves accountable that he loses this weight. So I'm hoping at least lose a pound within the next month or two. And uh, that's kind of all we can hope for. But he's a good boy. He's and, got it. Yeah. He can do it. Yeah. He can do it. I believe in him. He's a strong, he, he's, uh, you know, everything in life is hard to earn. So <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Uh, earlier this evening, the FBI, um, as well as the um, Director of National Intelligence, so that's um, John Ratcliffe, as well mm -hmm. as the FBI director, Christopher Ray, held a press conference in which they actually found that these threatening emails going to Democratic voters in a bunch of these swing states in Florida, in Pennsylvania, 
uh, in Arizona, and then Alaska, which isn't really a swing state, but there's a Senate election there, so that could go, you know, that could go way. one way or the other. But it's typically a Republican state, so Alaska put that to to the side. Um, basically, there there were these threatening emails being sent to Democratic voters, um, addressed by the Proud Boys, the you know far right white nationalist group or far right group. I don't know if they're you know 100 percent white nationalist essentially they're, they're like 65 percent like 69 percent nice yeah here i'm gonna i'm gonna put ernie down because he's getting huffy puffy <laughs> he likes to lay down on the doggy bed or sometimes just on the floor just to cool off you okay right. bud do you want to go up or you want to go on the couch he's just staring at me <laughs> No, he's just coming to hang out. He'll figure it out. Good boy. Go sit. Go to your place. No, this is the time when he doesn't want to listen to me. <laughs> cool. Come on, bud. You got to sweet talk him. No, he's going to go hump a doll. All this horny talk made him horny. <laughs> 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 uh mary thank you so much mary sending healing love to earn uh Maisie too you can do this earn earn and i really appreciate it um billy finn thank you billy put a fatwa on that vet <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna open the door for him so that he can go out and uh potentially hump another stuff go animal. for it okay. all right <laughs> i'll read some of you guys' comments while he goes and does that Okay. All right. Where were we? We were getting on um, with uh, the FBI and John Ratcliffe and uh, Christopher Ray holding this um, uh, press conference this evening. And mm -hmm. basically, so they found that Iran was behind these threatening emails being sent to Democratic voters in these swing states. And um, I mean, we knew Iran was going to be um, influence, trying to influence the 2020 presidential election. However, I think you and I both know that um, it doesn't make any sense. The, there's, the one part that doesn't make any sense is that it looks like they were trying to hurt, hurt Biden's chances, chances, which no it strikes me as odd, does it not? Well, to me, the reason why I don't think that is because they're addressing it as the Proud Boys. And and they are trying what did Trump say? Stand back and stand by. So if it starts coming out that people are thinking it's the Proud Boys and pushing it that it's the Proud Boys, then it's going to be that they can use the narrative that it's is under Trump's guidance that they're uh, trying I, I, yeah, to trying to influence the election it's the 28 that dimensional way. chess move that I'm just too basic to understand. It's okay. I'm here I'm here to back you up Habibi. Thank you, I got Habibi. you. you know, but that's the, that, that's the reason why I think uh they did it that way is so they can push the blame back onto Trump and mm -hmm. that he's trying to to put a uh, you know trying to be very di divisive and they're trying to to threaten with violence and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, um, the only thing I'm worried about is, um, I mean, it, do you think, I mean, I guess since we're on this whole like election integrity stuff, they did, I mean, they did say Russia may have been behind this as well, but like, I feel like the only thing that people are talking about now that has anything to do with Russia and that's their debate about it is this whole Hunter Biden laptop thing. And uh, Adam Schiff, who I don't, I don't believe a single word he says. So Zero. The Hunter Biden uh, laptop and email um, uh, recovery and data trove um, is a Russia information campaign. And I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. For a second. Not, not one second. I think it's complete horse shit. Mm -hmm. And because that's all he eats every fucking day. And then 
throws it up onto journalists at CNN or, or in NBC that just suck it right back up yeah, and then throw it right back up to, to people who watch their fucking shows and shit. Because right. he was so wrong about everything that has to do with, with Russia collusion and all this kind of stuff. Oh, we have the documents. Oh, we're going to show this. Oh, he's going to get impeached and thrown in jail and blah, blah, blah. And then you have journalists. Oh, yes. He has ownership. Tell me. Say it to me. And whoa, it's just whoa, whoa, Jeffrey Tubin, chill the fuck out, buddy. It's just so fucking garbage. <laughs> it is. He is such a garbage person that people still use him as a legitimate source of any kind of information. Just fucking boggles my mind. Yeah. Anybody, I know we were going to say, I know we were gonna say this. Me a clip of his or yeah. sends me something he said, I slap him in the face and tell him to fuck right off. Yeah. I know we were going to talk about um, this in sort of our weekly jihad segment, but um, I guess it's a good tie in right now. Um, I mean, we'll get into more Hunter Biden stuff in a bit, but right. I will. Um, JC, thank you, JC, sends a, a super chat. Do you see the Trump team raising concerns over the debate commission are legit or just posturing? Um, so we got the debate happening tomorrow night, Thursday mm -hmm. night. Um, Essentially. 100%. Um, swear to God, Jay. Um, and I haven't seen the specific. I mean, the, the, the raising of concerns is the cutting off of his mic and potentially right. Joe Biden's mic so that um, they can have two minutes of uninterrupted time. I am going to be, I am. The thing is they're, uh, they're, they're already cutting off their mics. It's not like they're going there. It's not like they're threatening to cut off their mics, which I guess is smarter than um, I, I, it's smarter to have their mics already turned off. And then only turn it on for them to answer. But if they interject and try to actually have a debate, then it's obviously going to get stunted. And so right. um, there are going to be, I think there are going to be legitimate instances in which um, you can see the moderator possibly getting drunk with power. And the moderator, Kristen Welker, who's, who is a reporter for NBC News, um, has been basically. Uh, dodging allegations of being a Democrat. Look, I don't doubt she's a Democrat. Most reporters in Washington are. Um, They're all full of shit. I mean, I don't think anything's really wrong about Kristen Welker. I think she's... No, I don't either. I, I say more... I, I think she is... of Most of the reporters I've seen, she is more no-nonsense than most of the reporters I've seen in the White House. She is... Let's just say this. In their four years of Trump, I've never heard a you know a really dumb question from Kristen Welker at right. the White House press secretary or President Trump. She's made herself a star, and that is to her credit. The right, she's a Demo that she's probably a Democrat, which is look, it's probably like sixty nine percent true. Nice. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Very but nice. and and you're right because when you see other people like Acosta or Yamish or like these other people, the the guy from Playboy, yeah, all these people, they they really are want to make a name for themselves. So they're they're going to go out there and be like you know so combative and all this kind of shit. And you're right, you don't really hear her or yeah. see her tweets like that or any or anything like she's she's just her. faking it or whatever. You know, so I would say this, and this is, you know, Peter Alexander has done more to sort of make himself be a bit more resistancy, but not enough, but not too much. Not like Jim Acosta levels, not like Weijia Zhang, not like Yamish, um, certainly not like Brian Karam. Like Brian Karam and Acosta are like a whole other, their whole other echelon. Their whole, yeah, they're they're in a different level, and I think like it is a disservice to the press corps and to the American people to actually have people like that going into the press conferences. And that's just, that's my take on it. I yeah. don't think that so, they, but they like, should be allowed. But like Kristen Welker and Hallie Jackson in particular, I say from NBC, they have done a very good job of not letting, even if they are Democrats, letting their bias sort of um, turn themselves into resistant, you know, resistance journalists. Um, right. So, you know, we'll see how the debate, ha we'll see how the debate goes. And 
if that ends up being her moment to become sort of a resistance journalist, then we'll, you know, we'll know. We'll, 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 yeah. we'll, we'll change our view. But like until then, you know, there's a there's going to be there certainly is a chance um, for things to go awry um, and for the Trump campaign to be complaining about it. I don't right. see the Biden campaign complaining. I don't see the Biden campaign complaining about the moderator, but maybe complaining about, say, the format or about trump himself so. or, if, or if they ask or if they ask uh, some sort of question i mean one thing that's really bad is that they're not talking about foreign policy and i think they really should be because that's a wait wait, wait what they're not talking about foreign poli policy are they since, since when wait are they talking about foreign policy i didn't see the subject I thought, I thought I thought the, was about foreign policy unless i'm completely thought, wrong no i don't think you're wrong i think i could be wrong but i thought they're not doing foreign policy. I thought they were talking about race and climate change and that kind of stuff. Um, now I got to look this up because I'm going to, I thought it was about foreign policy, but um, let's see here. I probably, let's see. All right, topics for they change, okay so jc said they changed the topics okay um so what they changed the topics to oh american families race in america climate change national security and leadership okay oh, so maybe so that was a second debate if anything so they did take away foreign policy i mean because the thing is the worst the foreign policy in comparison like with when biden was in office and Trump's four years in office is like night and day. All right. So that changes the game quite a bit because honestly, I think Trump beats Biden on foreign policy, if you can believe it. 100%. Essentially. God damn it. He really cool. does. I really think. No, he, I mean, he does. And that, that's not just like, you know, blowing smoke up Trump's ass. Like Trump hasn't started any new wars. Mm -hmm. That is a huge to his, you know, huge to his credit. Biden, who has been in politics for so long, has basically voted for every single war that right been that we've been into. And, and as Iraq vice president and was, and as vice president was part of, and I mean, he didn't, he wasn't like nearly as big of a part of it as say Hillary Clinton and Susan Rice, but the operation mm -hmm. to basically open up a you know a combat zone in, in Libya that created a you know failed state and led to Benghazi, um, and obviously the the ouster of. Um, Muammar Gaddafi and his his death, right? Um, but that you know, things on like Russia, on China, um, you know, Middle East peace. I mean, these are things that Trump, despite the fact that like Trump gets dinged on Russia all the time just because of the whole 2016 saga and the Mueller probe, like. The Trump administration has been actually pretty tough on China, on on Russia and implementing sanctions, and China, it, hmm? and China, and China. Uh, you had the trade war with China, but people aren't as focused on you know the the left isn't as focused on China as they should be. The only way, the only reason there is any focus on China from the left um, is purely from a human rights perspective um, on. Uh, the Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang. And this is not everyone on the left. I say that it's a very small faction of the left that um, probably has been paying attention to this, this issue. Um, and to their credit, you know, some of them have been very consistent on it. I just don't think that it has been loud enough and people don't care enough about China um, or don't see that China is a huge geopolitical adversary to the united states um or even a national security threat um to think right. that they need to start calling out uh or pushing um they say their candidates to speak out more vociferously about china well i mean if they ever if they really get gave a shit about you know social justice or actually human rights in any way that they they would be mm -hmm. they need to be a, a more um vocal about it i think everybody does and and it's a sad thing because we're watching something happen happen in china that is very that they basically promised me that 
what is happening to the Uyghurs in, in China, what happened to the gays here in America. And Bruce is still out free. And really? Bruce, he's still out free. And he's actually back on Twitter now too. And I'm just saying <laughs> it's a fucking failure as um, – as as a Trump uh, Trump administration, it's they failed. They completely failed. But mm-hmm. I wanted to go up to somebody. He uh, put in five dollars on the super chat, JC, and I wanted to say that you know Soleimani is, I think, is a win. Oh, killing yeah. ki- Thank killing you. Soleimani I is, see that. is a win in my eyes for foreign policy. That guy led for more more Muslim deaths in the Middle East than than another man could be responsible for, other than Bush. Mm. Like yeah, I mean, like one monster is- of a motherfucker, and I'm really glad that they killed him. I mean, uh, if anything, if anything, I think if they go in and they kill every person in Hamas, that would be better for the Middle East than anything else ever as well. So and, a couple of things. So he also highlights Jamal Khashoggi. Um, and and I'm for I'm for clause in just so you guys can know. So half of the stuff <laughs> I'm going to be saying is out of my ass. And you're speaking in that bedroom voice. I like it. <laughs> We're getting the ASMR right now. <laughs> um, so I can't even hear you. What's that? And then I like the ass. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice I'm not wearing headphones because I'm hearing everything through my computer and there's no supposedly no echo to the mic. So. You know, we're just going based off of that. Um, but, you know, there are a few. I mean, it's not like Trump has been perfect on foreign policy. He's oh, had no. a few stumbles. Absolutely. Um, his response to Jamal Khashoggi wasn't that great. Um, I think it's been debatable about the JCPOA, the joint plan. Uh, wait, I think it's JCPOA, the joint countries. What's the fuck? Now I can look this up. How, I know it's plan of action, but JCPOA. Joint comprehensive plan of action. I knew that there was like something weird about that. See, um, you know, the Iran nuclear deal. I think everybody's wondering exactly what, you know, I think some people would probably argue that no deal was better than a bad deal. And they thought that the JCPOA was a bad deal. You know, it's, well, it's a, to be determined. I think it was certainly not a good deal for the U.S. since we gave them what, $150 billion in cash that yes, pretty much went to power. Paris. And I think it did go to terrorists. It went straight to Hamas. Yeah, it went to, and, uh, you know, to I, IRGC, the Re- Re- Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and uh, Quds Force, which went, you know, which uh, Qasem Soleimani was uh, in charge of. He was a commander in Iraq. Right. I think it was a really bad, uh, a bad thing. I think any time that we give in to China, Iran, Russia, any one of these places that are really bad with with uh, human rights mm-hmm. i mean it's not even it's not even the fact that they're such an enemy to the american people but it's also what they do to their own people that makes it sick why yeah. the fuck are we giving a hundred billion to these people that hang women from from cranes and push gays off of buildings why yeah um jc who's really shelling out the dough tonight says yes but how is that approach different from the neoliberal response which biden offers i don't know which one that we're not was. at war with iran are we I, I don't know if he's talking about Iran or if he's talking about Saudi. He's probably talking about Iraq. I mean, it, especially because like we were supposed to have this huge World War Three after we went and right. killed this motherfucker, but that didn't happen. And mm-hmm. I think the people who the reason the only reason why they they said to do it is because they they had a really good um, reasoning to think that it wasn't going to start another Iraq. Wait, hold on. Did Jay? Did you say a hundred percent in the last? Like, essentially. Fuck. I need to go get another one. All I'll right, get another right one. Back. I'll answer some questions. Um. So, uh, I saw Imran ask a question earlier about the bounties, um, in Afghanistan, and I honestly. I don't know what the update is on that. Um, maybe one of the Habibis knows a little bit better than I do. Um, because uh, there's just... Also, I don't even know what the fuck's going on in Nigeria. There's a bunch of shit going on in Nigeria. Oh, fuck. So protesters were shot in Nigeria. There's been a lot of 
police brutality and SARS. What the fuck? Um. So Imran's talking about um fuck. about the bounty program. I think that was confirmed, but I'm trying to figure out what if that's still going on or not. Whatever, we're gonna we'll find out. Carter Scott says Siraji talked about South Park earlier. How do you feel about the time they showed the picture of Muhammad? Ah, I'm glad you brought that up. And Jay, oh man, I didn't throw this on the rundown, but I meant to. I was sort of scatterbrained. I don't know if Jay can hear me. He may have taken off his headphones. Um, but I'll tell you what I think. Um, I was never bothered by it. Um, I think the what we saw in Paris uh, this past week where a teacher was beheaded um, because he started showing images of the Prophet Muhammad, completely unacceptable. Um, there is nothing, nothing that can justify killing another human being. Um, I don't care if you mock the prophet. I don't care if you call him all sorts of names or whatever. There's no justification for killing another human being um, because of things they say or do. Um, or for, yeah. Yeah, we're talking about the um, pro- the teacher who was uh, uh, beheaded killed and decapitated and beheaded by uh, basically an Islamic extremist in Paris. Um, so and when South Park happened, I was actually on their, I was actually on the creator's side because I remember, um, you know, the Dutch cartoonists who were killed um, at the hands of these radical Islamic extremists um, for drawing pictures of the Prophet Muhammad or comics, and um, it, you know it's 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 upsetting because you know that the punishment doesn't fit the crime in the it's not even a crime. It's free speech. No. And like the, the fact that it just makes all of us Muslims look like, you know, you know, knuckle dragging troglodytes who just like get right. offended at like the, the smallest, simplest thing. and smallest things. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of people about this as well because I knew this shit wasn't right. And, how but like i didn't know what the proper response would be to something like that because you know someone who may be insulting your faith you know you you think you should take exception or take offense to it and honestly a lot of the times of how you respond to a certain slight or insult is on you it's not always on the person insulting you you can let it bother you or you cannot let it bother you and for a lot of these people who are going out and waging violence against others who are, say, insulting the prophet or simply drawing him uh, and showing imageries uh, of him or caricatures of him, like, that's on them. That's right. on them to figure out how to handle that. And, mm-hmm. to, and, and we saw this over, say, like this happened. I've had a somewhat personal story about it as well. Um, and it's relation to the Pakistani blasphemy law. Um, mm-hmm. So back in 2011, uh, the there's a region in Pakistan, which I grew up called Punjab. And uh, people who are familiar with Pakistan and India, there's two provinces by the same name. They're basically the... And there was a, a governor of Punjab by the name of Salman Tasir. I actually went to school in Lahore with his kids and I knew them pretty well. Um, And there was a woman, Asiya Bibi. uh, I'm going to type it into the the chat so everyone can go Google her name um, and find out what her, basically learn her story. She was accused of blasphemy against the prophet and it was Mm -hmm. based on, you know, complete... um, it was a fabrication, really. It wasn't a real, like she, there was, it was basically like the community or village's word against her. So like she had, she had been imprisoned. She was going to be put to death. And then, you know, the, 
the governor Salmanjir said, hey, you know, maybe we should relook at these blasphemy laws. And um, his bodyguard, within the next like day or two, like emptied his clip on in him, killed him. And there was like wide swaths of people in Pakistan who are celebrating this man as a hero. And this entire time I'm thinking like, this is just so fucked up. Like there, it's not even that he bl blasphemed the prophet. He just talked about, Hey, maybe we should just reform these laws. So like, like, right. If there is blasphemy, like it's better vetted. It's not like, you know, like we have to, we don't run like a banana republic where people would just accuse each other of crimes and like have that be it. You know, they don't have a defense. And this guy got killed for it. He got assassinated by his bodyguard. And it's um no, it was terrible. It, I still talk to his son to this day. Um oh, wow. Jerry Artasir. He's actually a publisher of a newspaper out in um in Pakistan. Uh it's not Don. I'm trying to remember what the exact name is, but he's I mean he and his family are, 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 are doing well, but I will say this. I mean, his, his, his brother, Shabazz, was kidnapped um, by the Taliban and was held captive for like five years. Um, so there are a lot of, there's a lot of fucked up shit and a lot of things that kind of like really make me depressed about um, Muslims and Pakistanis that, you know, things that, you know, most civilized people shouldn't do, but. Right. And it's not just a Pakistani thing, too. There are a lot of other places that have like blasphemy laws and stuff that are, yeah, they just no, really that. need to be, they need to be revisited. They need to be I looked know. at. But like, even saying that is like a death sentence. And that's why, it's, right. It's the, that's why the Paris thing bothers me so much. And, you know, I don't feel a need. The thing is, I'm sure people would criticize me for not commenting. Or like condemning the Paris um, murder or the you know the, the the beheading on Twitter because I mean Jay, you and I both have dealt with like the accusations of like if we're not condemning it, we're somehow complicit or like accepting of it. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like it's almost like inherently um, like it's our responsibility what these people exactly. are doing, right? And it drives me nuts. And so the only time I weighed in on it was to talk about how it was, you know, to put someone on the list. Uh, that was a Delaware Senate candidate for sharing a screenshot of the terrorist Twitter account who posted an image of the uh, the victim's decapitated head. And right. that shit really got to me. And I posted it. I posted a screenshot of her tweet. I cropped out the part where where she included the man's head and it just like the this is like the type it's like it's so immensely disrespectful to the victim to his family to his loved ones and it's just like you know there's no need for that and then all of a sudden i got like people on the right coming after me for basically being they think i'm basically an islamist now so I know it's so stupid, and they take it to the to the extreme themselves, oh, yeah. which is batshit crazy. Yeah. But one thing I like to talk about is like how different it is here in the United States compared to like France or compared to Germany or Spain or anywhere else. And the reason for that is is because here in the United States, America is more accepting and open, and the people who come here are more willing to change a little bit. I mean, one thing I saw that happen too is like, for example, my dad, like mm -hmm. if I go back to, to Lebanon and I see his, his dad and I see some of the family members there and all that, and they're how, how deep they are in Islam and, and stuff. It's, it's, it's a lot different between what he is and what he has liberally, like liber liberated himself a little bit yeah. over as well. I think it's just the, willingness and wanting to accept more american values in your life in your livelihood and your in your life has something that does something to people because here in america they're more accepting for you to to be that way too in france they're not i think mm. i think europe is like 10 or even 20 times more racist and unaccepting of people than the united states i think the stats were like 
would you want a Muslim as your neighbor here in the United States was like 69%. Nice. And like in France, (laughs) it was like, it was less than 50. Like in, and these things are not being told. And that's, that's a problem for me because America is not this racist, unaccepting, un, unopened, unfriendly, like all of these, these things and adjectives that the, the left and the fucks in the media are trying to put in your head. It's not. It's the, one of the most open places and accepting places that there has ever been in the, in the world and there ever will be. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, America certainly has its problems with race and stuff, but I mean, it, it, I always think in how, you know, it's all relative, right? You know, things that would happen here in the United States may never happen in places like France or the UK or, or Germany. It's just, it, I mean, they're completely different cultures, completely different countries. And, um, you know, they deal with their own issues and yeah. it's just, I mean, culture shock is a real thing where you just go where and you find that the the issues that they deal with on the day to day are completely different. Like you have no idea how that shit would go down, and if that happened in the U.S., it's just there's no comparison. Um, right. Anyways, that being said, thanks for the question, Carter. Uh, on that, I know we kind of got into sort of a deep discussion on that, <laughs> but uh, I thought that was at least important to have. And um, uh, no, it was. Yeah. Ernie's just sleeping by the desk. He's so cute. <laughs> Let me see if I can position the camera. You guys can see it. Hold on one second. There he is. <laughs> Look at him. I swear to God, I would confuse him for a loaf of bread. He really is a loaf of bread. Let me just close the door. Give me one second. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So back to our regularly scheduled program. So um, Trump has been talking about this weird thing with 60 minutes he's got this interview was supposed to go out on sunday and yes. he was threatening to post the interview and instead of posting the interview he just posted a bunch of photos it was the weirdest thing <laughs> i hadn't seen any images let's just let's just go through his twitter right now let's just go through it Okay, so he has a rally. Talking about Ratcliffe, another rally, another rally, more rally, rally, rally. And rally. Biden and Biden's on the lid. But Bi- Biden's on the lid. It's so amazing, isn't it? I hadn't. Seen I don't it. know. I st- I don't know how this guy does it. Like, let's where? just say like, how Trump does all of this shit. Like, I don't understand where he gets this energy. Oh, from. oh, oh, oh. I thought you said he had like a meme for the lid. No, I'm just saying like he's doing all this shit and Biden's still taking a lid. I'm just saying like, what the? F- I want to know the chemical mix this fuck is taking because I want to take it in my daily life right now. Like so, to I go mean, on is- at 110 percent at 70 whatever years old while you're overweight and orange is insane to me. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, people have talked about how he's taking Adderall, which I wouldn't doubt, but you know, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it at all. I think Sarah, Adderall's thank you, Sarah. veggies a, for earn making a plug good. here. Comfortably smug has a podcast on Apple called ruthless. Wow. Sarah, are you getting paid by smug to, to plug his podcast? You should. Yeah, now, you honestly, know. we should, we should have him on our podcast too. You think he would, you think he'd go for it? No, he wouldn't. What is he, Indian and you're Pakistani? Like, it would That'd be war. It, it doesn't mix, right? Yeah. I mean, I've met him before. No, I'm just playing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll check out the first episode. I'll see how it is. You know, um, could be interesting. You know, the thing is, though, um, I'm sure a lot of people think that, you know, he's really savage um, in 
on Twitter and that he'd be really savage um, on a podcast. He guys, I mean, he's he's very personable, very nice, um, and probably and pretty charismatic. So I would I would argue that he is probably not going to appear as savage. Although I will listen to it. I mean, it's called Ruthless. Um, there's a lot to live up to right there. Right. What the fuck is going on with your mic right there? It's just like. Was it bad? What's uh, going on? It sounded. It sounded like you were coming in like real hot. Like a... <laughs> Anyways, this is what Trump posts. He posts an image of one of the interviews with. He just keeps going. Okay, <laughs> it's so weird. Like, why is he doing that? Yeah, and then this is the funniest bit. Um, Kaylee McEnany presenting Leslie Stahl with some of the many things we've done for healthcare. Leslie had no idea, so you get this this big ass binder, right? Then you got that, and people were like focusing on the fa- on this. I don't know if you can zoom. You can't really zoom in, um, right? But what it, but that's it, it's like, blank. The they're they're all saying it's blank. I mean, it's good. It's good for comedy to say it's all blank. Yeah, but anyways, so <laughs> yes, Imran, Kali McAnal is hot. She is. Um. Are you guys allowed to be this horny on Maine? Hey, it's Happy Power Hour. You I guess can be that's as horny true. as you want. The one area. This is the Simps only. We Habibi are accepting Power. of all the horniness. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, but uh, like Trump seemed to like make this a huge thing about 60 minutes. Like he was trying to dodge something, but he like walked out of the interview pretty much as it was happening, you know, not as it was happening, but he like, they found like a break time. And then he was just like, yeah, we're not doing the rest of the interview. And CBS started making it a big thing that like CBS, uh, you know, Trump canceled the interview with CBS. Like, do you actually think it's going to be about anything? I don't. I don't think it's going to be anything like anything. I think he just did it to to show force. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? To show like, yeah, fuck the media and and that kind of stuff. I honestly think if he would just sit down and and have these these interviews and stuff, it's better for him. Uh-huh. Especially since you don't see Biden doing jack fuck all shit. When was the last time uh, Biden had an interview that had real questions? Instead of having infomercials on NBC with fucking ex Obama speechwriters asking questions as undesired voter, voters or some shit, I this is this, this right there is a huge fucking media scandal too. And what is Brian Stelter doing? Nothing. He's probably just going somewhere sucking on a fucking potato. Well, do you want to just get into that right now? Let's do it. I'm ready. I'm going to go right. fucking Let's dive into it. Up. Hold on, we got to switch our banner up. To weekly jihad. <laughs> <laughs> um, because what you're about to see um, comes the courtesy, comes the courtesy of mm-hmm. one of my colleagues at the Examiner, Susan Friccio. And she went on a podcast with uh, Brian Stelter on um, BBC. So let's 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 listen to this this. <laughs> Brilliant piece of audio. He's running for president of the United States. And this is serious. These, this is not last year's news. It's whether or not his son was coordinating to get him to talk to these Ukraine oligarchs. And he was benefiting from it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's really dirty. Okay, and Brian, it, Brian, it looked at. Forgive me, Brian Stelter. And then I want to move on to the Google, which is a related story. Brian. I, you know, you, I, I said it was last season. You're saying it's new. Uh, I think bottom line is we don't know what is real and what is fake in these emails, if there is anything real in them. Yeah, but and that didn't stop any from, from, from reporting the Mueller and the dossier and all that I stuff. You're now, I understand that you have a lot of resentment oh, about it. Now, now we have ethics. Okay, now we have ethics. Now that now it's da- a don't you dare. Don't you dare act like newsrooms didn't have ethics in 2017 and 2018. Well, I you know, know they, they did. did. So, well, you can't, you can don't dare me all you want, Brian. I've been doing this for 30 years. So say whatever you want. It's my view. And I have a right to say it. I was so invited your view on the is that the news media was unethical <laughs> with Mueller? Hang on a second. One time. I don't quite get what it's you're just... It's my view. So. It's my view. So. Let me, let me bring, let me bring in Sarah Fisher. And then I... 
Uh, that was so good. I liked it. How wet is I like right now, Jay? I am so wet for her right now. Can you can you yep. you know put in a good word for me? What with uh, with Susan? You know, just, <laughs> just ask if I could DM her, say hello, maybe go out for tacos when I come down in, in DC. I don't know. Put in a word for your boy. I was expecting more. more tell her than... I eat ass. Just tell her I eat ass. <laughs> Do it right up, right up in front. Just be like, I have this guy. He eats ass. He wants tacos. The pronouns, after all. Like, Eight uh, ass. Um, no, I think it, I think it's great in it, like how she threw that right in in Stelter's right in face. face, and how defensive he got. Like he got so defensive. He's supposed to be a media a media journalist. He's supposed to critique the media. And there is no way you cannot look at what they're doing with the New York Post and what they did with the Steele dossier, especially after everything we know that has come out from the Steele dossier. Everything mm-hmm. we know that's come out for it. And Brian Stelter, has he reported on how wrong they, they were with the, the, the Steeler uh, probe? Did, mm-hmm. did he write in his stupid fucking newsletter that it was a, a, was a Russian disinformation? That it's come out that the Steeler dossier was filled with Russian d- disinformation. Has he wrote that once? Has he tweeted it once? Has he can't, can't come onto his show and talked about it once? You want to talk about ethics in, in journalism? There is no entity in journalism right now or outside journalism as an independent, as something independent that actually pushes ethics onto journalism and onto journalists. There's nothing like that that does it. People can get shit so wrong and be totally okay and still have a job. Yeah, I was, I mean, I would, I would expect it would be a deep search to try to find Brian Stelter talking about the, um, how the steel dossier was debunked and how it was chock full of, um, fabricated information like P tape prostitutes, um, Mm -hmm on on donald trump i mean come on it's the most salacious shit that you've ever heard of course it's too good to be true you right. know even the, 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 my favorite thing about the p tape by the way is um i'm gonna pull this up because this is just this this kills me every single time i see it um and it is everything about it just i i cry when i think how did I not think of this first? Where is it? Hold on one second. Uh, give me a second here. We're pulling it up right here. The coal. Bad news for the resistance. Sources close to Mueller are suggesting the P tape is real, but it is hot as hell. Maybe the sexiest event. <laughs> <on the> <laughs> <laughs> oh shit that's so perfect that is so good that's the that's the one thing i think about when it comes to the p tape and the steel dossier i don't know why it's so stupid but so funny no that's oh, so good man anyways um just a, a quick uh um going off on a quick tangent just to answer mark uh mark's question here uh who gave us some bread in the super chat thank you mark any thoughts on the world series also do you plan to have an election special so mark um on the world series the one thing that depresses me more than anything is the fact that mookie Betts is in the world series and he's not in a red Sox uniform that really fucking depresses me i know nothing about baseball I'm just saying that right now. I have I never no idea what baseball is. Never and expect you to. And I'm just okay. now getting back into uh, football. Well, hold on. But I want to answer his question. Also, do you plan to have an election special? And the answer is yes. Absolutely. And we are figuring that out right now as we speak. One of the things we're thinking of is to do it on Twitch. Because on Twitch, you can import any different, you know, all these different elements. A lot of abuse actually. Uh, be a part of it um right and, and you can uh, join 
join uh, Siraj's Twitch channel because we're going to be twitching on his channel live, the presidential debate tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you can join my Twitch channel because I'm trying to convert Among Us players into Islam. Slowly but surely. <laughs> it's happening. I mean, some of them is happening. I go into every one of them saying, Assalamu alaikum, and I don't wow, get, get kicked out <laughs> right away. So let's do this. Essentially. A hundred fucking percent, baby. Uh, anyways, um, so my Twitch, uh, let me see. What's the Twitch? Among Islam. <laughs> Among <laughs> Islam. <laughs> <laughs> Among Islam. <laughs> You got to find the jihad deep among the group. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. That's too good. Yeah. None the wise. It says Siraj needs as many stream hours as possible so we can get him affiliate status. Honestly, I was thinking about streaming every day f until election day. Um, mm -hmm. And even possibly the f that entire week as well. At least getting on, on Twitch. I don't know when. but I'm going to try and do that too. Yeah. I need to do it. I, I just bought a new computer. I got a, an iMac. I, I like I'm trying to figure this all out yeah. as we go along. I don't I don't have um, a PC, so I couldn't play Among Us as we currently stand, which sucks. But well, you can play. Well, can't you mirror your iPhone onto your MacBook? Possibly. I don't know. I think you can if you can yeah. do that, because you can download it on your iPhone and play it on your MacBook. Yeah. Kel Norton. Thank you, Kel. Ooh. Um, she asked, but are you voting for Trump? That's a good question. I already, I already casted my vote and everything I wrote in my left nut and <laughs> vice president is Siraj's right nut. And I did today. <laughs> but down ticket here in California, I, I voted Republican all the way through. Um, I haven't voted yet, but I'm going to be writing in Ernie. Um, and the reason why is because. Yeah, I've thought about this quite quite a bit. Um, it doesn't do me any good to vote for one candidate over a Democrat or Republican because that's not really – I'm not in favor of either party. Um, I'm in favor of ideas. And I think, you know, with Virginia being a um, – pretty much being a Biden state mm – -hmm. uh, Mine's a throwaway vote. I don't, I, again, like, I, I think it's more important for me to maintain sort of my, um, my independence on this. Right. You know, man, like, it's just, it's not about like, you know, issues or what have you that, you know, like that we're voting on. My vote's not going to make a difference in Virginia. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm writing in Ernie because. He's the only only uh, presidential candidate I really care about, and he is running for president. Just FYI, on a running, on a on a write-in platform, <laughs> and on, on the platform of deporting me. So there's that. So that's that that does a good enough reason than any. That's a good enough reason right there. JC says thoughts on Laura Loomer's proud Islamophobe comments. By the way, I spend money here because I don't go to bars anymore. <laughs> Thank you, JC. I don't know Laura Loomer's comments. Let's look at it. Honestly, I don't pay attention to her anymore. Not at all. But I think, was it recent or was it? Uh, this is like August. Oh, but I'm reading a fucking Chris Saliza piece. I don't know. I don't know when she did this. This is August 19, 2020. August 19, uh, 2020. No, when Chris Kaliza wrote up his Chris thing. Kaliza. Uh, Chris Jaliza. Chris Jizaliza. Chris Jizaliza. Chris Chris Jizaliza. I I can't I can't stand Laura Loomer. She I can't either. I think she's garbage as fuck. And anybody who's like pushing her or um, supporting her, her or anything like that is complete completely yeah. fucking. Disgusting. I just like I just don't. Like it's the thing is, as soon as you start voting, you vote for one party or vote for another party. All of a sudden, your vote is sort of. T There's no way to explain that vote. Every everybody only sees what their worst um, perspective is on that on that vote. Like they think you're voting for, say, Trump's bigotry, or like you're voting for Antifa. Like it just. There's no. 
like common ground for like or oh what's going on jay do you need us huh? to cut out early no you're fine it's fuzzy's <laughs> mom just walked in <laughs> Oh my God! Wonder Kimmy S. Where is it? She just had it. I just had. It. Where the fuck did it go? Wonder Kimmy says, "Who is Laura Loomer? Consider yourself Good lucky, question. Kimmy. Don't even, don't even try to. Don't find even that. have. Don't even Google her. She sucks so much. You don't have to. You don't need to know. Oh hey, look who's back, Boris Farage. What's up, Boris? What up, British BB? Yeah, BC Thomas. Thank you, BC. My vote is still up for grabs, but if AOC would let me mow their boat for six to nine seconds, I'll <laughs> vote by Jesus Christ. Oh, also man. nice for using the no, six that's, to nine that's seconds. That's good. I mean, if she let me eat that ass, I'd vote for Biden. But... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just this is what will get me canceled. <laughs> You're all the worst. <laughs> That's the thing is anytime someone sends money in the super chat, I have to click on it because I feel if I don't do it, um, that's money poorly spent. Anyways. Um, oh, so I know we kind of got off on a tangent, but I will say this, this Hunter buy thing, because that's what the subject of this whole um Brian Stelter, Ferriccio, sort of back and forth was about is that Hunter Biden's laptop contents and a data trove published through the New York Post. Um, we'll get into big tech censorship in just a second, but just focusing on his laptop. We talked about Russian disinformation earlier. I think you and I both believe that there is not Russian disinformation, but there's a certain level of um, sort of, there are a lot of unknowns about it that we're not entirely sure are, mm -hmm. are really the smoking gun. Like the New York Post in their story, let me pull it up just because, actually I could probably find it in my, on Roka, because I wrote about it for Roka News this week about whether it's actually going to be what, what dooms Biden. And based on what we know now, I don't think it does, but... I don't think it does either. In but... terms of, in terms of like the actual, um, and let me let me post sort of like the screen share of it so you guys can see. Um, so this is New York Post posted, and why is it why is it looking so zoomed in? Yeah, it's weird a little bit, but I mean it's still clear Anyways, as but fuck. In the headline, it says "Smoking Gun." Email <laughs> reveals how Hunter Biden introduced Ukrainian businessman to VP Dad. And what the initial argument that they're trying to undermine is that um, Biden said he's never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. And I don't think this email that they're showing right here confirms that uh, Biden sp talked business with this um with this russian Vadim, uh, i'm sorry with this ukrainian uh who's like the number three executive at burisma uh mm -hmm. on the burisma board his name's Vadim uh pozarski uh, actually you know what jay you want you want to you want to say this one you're such an asshole uh yeah, let, Vadim? Me, let, me zoom, let me zoom in and highlight it for you hold on let's uh, actually uh, let's move it up hold on vadim hold on vadim oh, there we go there it is there it is vadim Paul Pozaraski Vadim Pozaraski. That's not bad. I know it's not bad, bitch. I was worried that you were gonna say <laughs> Vadim. I th I thought you were gonna say something like Vadim Poz fuck your mom. <laughs> I mean, essentially 100%. that was a really good uh, impression of me. Oh, <sighs> But the thing, the, the thing to me when it comes to these things is how defensive Biden is and says, no, I never spoke to these people. I never did any of this and blah, 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 blah. And then you have that interview of, of Hunter back then saying like, I mean, he wouldn't have been on any board 
if it wasn't for saying that his father is the vice president of the United States. And that's like believable. He, he said those words himself in an interview. He yeah. said those words. And then, I mean, to me, if you say, dear Hunter, thank you for inviting me to, to DC to meet your father and have uh, spend some time together. Of fucking course they talked about shit. Yeah. I mean, I know you're you, you really not going to know. You know, what's actually more damaging um, to Biden's case or, or Biden's cause than um, these emails is video of him in 2018 talking about how he fired um, Victor Shokin, the prosecutor who was investigating Burisma for corruption, um, saying that if um, the president at the time, I think it was either uh, Petro Poroshenko, if he didn't fire Victor Shokin, he wasn't going to get the $1 billion aid package uh, mm -hmm. from the U.S. And so, boom, they fired of course, the, oh god, what the fuck? I hate these ads. Of course, one of the um, uh, pushbacks on that is that you know Victor Shokin had his own uh, reputation of corruption, and mm -hmm. that the international community had basically condemned this dude. They thought he was basically a, a PN, a PNG, a persona non grata. And um, I just I, I, I put this email up here from the article because I just want to read it out to the Habibis, um, in which Vadim Pozorowski says, uh, writes to Hunter in April of 20, 2015, uh, Dear Hunter, thank you for inviting me to D.C. and giving me an opportunity to meet your father and spend some time together. It's really an honor and pleasure. As we spoke yesterday evening, it would be great to meet today for a quick coffee. What do you think? Blah, 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 blah. Who gives a shit? Um, the rest is nonsense. Uh, it doesn't has it's no relevant relevancy. You're right. This particular email does not confirm that Biden talked about his business about Hunter Biden's. Uh, doesn't confirm that Joe Biden ever spoke to his son Hunter about his overseas business dealings. This meeting, however, I mean that being said, the likelihood is pretty high. You know, I, I, I mean, like. If you I introduce, think it is. if it, you introduce your business associate to a family member, there's a pretty good chance that business is going to come up, given the fact that this guy's the number three executive at Burisma, and Joe Biden was the vice president at the time. Um, so I'm waiting on more information before I completely, you know, before I can make an honest assessment of it. And I encourage right. everyone to do the same. Um, and there's now, um, the FBI is looking into money laundering. The FBI is looking into child por pornography, the trial. The, so it's, it's I, I think the, the reason why they're looking into child pornography is because Gi Giuliani stating it or whatever. But I mean, once, we know from the FBI what's what's all in there. It's I think it's gonna be I, I think it's gonna be really bad. I mean, not maybe not you know child por pornography bad, but I think the bad part is that how corrupt it was and how much Biden was involved in it. Yeah. Um but I will say um one thing that I will keep an eye out for. Is I, I guess just what we've seen in the last week, because some of the information that has been published about Hunter Biden has been pretty salacious. You know, it's like drug use, you know, him asleep with a crack pipe in his mouth, him apparently snorting cocaine off a hooker's ass or on an identified woman's ass. Um, sorry, I don't want to assume the woman is a hooker. But the likelihood is pretty high. I would say. <laughs> that she is a hooker, yeah. Um, it's not like anyone they care about asked, asked, let's say a significant other, Hey, can, <laughs> can I, can I snort some blow off your ass? Like that's, that's, we pretty much know where that's, that that's going. Right. That and just one second. Going. I just need to text uh, fuzzy's mom a question. <laughs> just to see. I just, I just want to know, like. I'll let you guys know when yeah. she says. Um, 
And, and the thing is, the other thing is the complete 180 on all of the media, like all of them. It's not even just CNN. It's the New York Times. It's Washington Post, CNN. It's the New York Times. It's the um, NBC. The way they reported on the Steele dossier and the way they were reporting on this just confirms without a doubt how biased those newsrooms are. And then you see what did what the New York Times is doing as well. I mean, what Twitter is doing. They're like our policy on hacked or leaked or whatever or illegal content or blah 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 and all this kind of fucking bull shit that makes no sense. That it yeah. is complete garbage. That anyone who believes this bullshit is a fucking gullible, dumb shit that needs. Like I don't know how they're breathing. I don't understand how they can even breathe. They 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 are completely lying to everyone's faces about this, and nobody is is reporting on it either. Nobody, they they don't report on it because then they'd be like, oh, it's a vast white right wing conspiracy and all this kind of bullshit. The media is out here to lie to you, push out propaganda from both sides, and it's and it's just you need to. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what to, to say. It just it fucking frustrates the shit out of me seeing yeah. this because it's it's places like the New York Times and like Washington Post. They're supposed to be like these really re- reputable places for news to give you facts, to give you understanding and all this kind of stuff. And they're out sucking the steel dossier's dick because they thought that it was that they could be looked at as heroes or some shit. It's just yeah. Uh, face just thought your video this week on Hunter was very good. I'm did I do a video on Hunter? I wrote about Hunter. Did I do something? Did Pedro is did Pedro put me up to this? Pedro Gonzalez, the other tan <laughs> suit wearer, the guy who's supposedly me but not me. He's alt alt right, Siraj. <laughs> All right, Siraj. <laughs> Dollar store, Siraj. Yeah, if I did a video, oh man. I'm trying to think that I actually did a video of Hunter Biden. I don't think I did. I just wrote about it. I thought about doing a video. I did. Did I do a video? Fuck. No, I can't remember. Anyways, uh, the only thing I was just going to highlight, and and this was from a piece that I did for Roka News, is that um, if you actually, and I'll actually, I'll just post the link in the in the um, comments. Um, if you actually go and think about how Hunter Biden obviously isn't running for president, um, it, if Rudy Giuliani, who was the one who got this information to the post, um, if his goal was to sort of impugn Hunter Biden, that he was you know untrustworthy on matters of like international business, diplomacy, policy, like he was successful, he got his mm-hmm. job. But if it was to all, if it was really to get um, Joe Biden um, to sort of really undercut his campaign, I'd say that this doesn't meet the threshold right now because the most salacious aspects of this data trove is on Hunter. It's on the drugs, it's on the sex, it's on his addiction, and the text messages that he and his dad had, um, sort of showing like the unconditional love that Joe Biden has for his son Hunt, even through the darkest periods that he's going through, like even at a right. facility. And people look at that and they're just like, you know, maybe a decade or two ago, um, people would look at Hunter. I think more people would look at Hunter with sort of a, um, you know, like a condescending or condemnatory attitude that, mm-hmm. that um, you know, that we used to give people who are struggling with addiction. Now, like the opioid epidemic has like crippled so many uh, Americans and just people around the world um, who have struggled with addiction, whether it be, you know, from drugs, whether it be from alcohol, you name it. And I think a, a lot of people have sort of sympathy for Hunter and for his dad. Um because going through it then i think you would have seen maybe 10 years ago right and, that, I, I think... and that's good and i just want to say that's getting lost like this the allegations of corruption is getting lost in that i think so too but i think to me the the biggest takeaway on this is the way the media is handling it the way twitter is handling it 
And the way that, like, for example, the New York Post is still not able, is still locked out of Twitter. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, is and that's this? another bit, and that's another problem. And that's almost that's completely like and, uh, and I think that's the bigger story out of that this. shows you for one how it's almost like big tech is um is sort of complicit in this whole like establishment mm-hmm. charade of just maintaining power. Right. And then not only that, they're so they're none of their None of their explanations make any sense on the reasons why they do one one thing one way and then the same exact thing on another way. They don't yeah. do it. it like like for example, the leaked tax returns and the hacked, you know, steel dossier and all this kind of stuff. Like, why are they reporting on this and allowing it on Twitter? But now all of a sudden they're they're their policy has changed. Yeah. Makes no, no the way the Twitter handled it completely un- unacceptable. And the fact that no one's going to be held account to it is, is pitiful. It, it really, really is. is. It really, really is. BC Thomas. Thank you, BC. Fuzzy's mom said, all Jay needs is two minutes of uninterrupted time. <laughs> That's all I need to make her come from licking her ass. Two minutes. <laughs> That's it. It's that strong. Every- do you think that's what Jeffrey Tubin was after that he wanted just he's like, I just want two minutes of uninterrupted time. Can you please mute my <laughs> video? That's probably what he needed. Uh, <laughs> shit. Oh man, Jay, I'm feeling kind of lit right now. Oh okay. yeah, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Now you understand oh. where I come from the whole time. Faye says it was your interview with the other guy. Oh, is it the explainer? The explainer uh, podcast you have with Doctor, what's his name? Jason James? Nichols. Jason Nichols. Yes. Did you say anything with that? Like maybe something in regards there. Maybe I mentioned. I don't know. I don't know. And maybe it was. Maybe it was. Uh, because did you have an interview with anyone else? Well, I mean, I do hashing it out. Hashing it out has a guest every week. Um, last week I had a woman on Jessica Hoosman from ProPublica who everybody thinks is a lib and she probably is a lib, but she was giving me sort of like the, um, the dispelling all the myths and misconceptions about voting, voter fraud and voter suppression. It was a good episode. It was a good discussion because we talked about things that, you know, most liberals who would say is they would say that X, Y, and Z is voter suppression. She's like, no, that's not actually voter suppression. And, and, and sort of like gave the explanation, the reasons why, mm-hmm. um, the week before I had, um, uh, who was it? I had Andrew Heaton talking about originalism and textualism, uh, in relation to the Supreme court and, um, and, and living constitutionalism and Amy Coney Barrett. And that was a really good episode. The, the, the thing about that one that really drove me nuts, though, was that um, his internet cut out in the middle. And mm-hmm. the Zoom recording got all fucked up. And that was more of an editing thing on my end that really bothered me. But let's see what if, they, if there was another thing that I, I missed. Um, maybe, oh, she said, maybe I remember parts of that, parts of the Roku piece uh but yeah i mean i do so many videos and i it just i'm worried this is the thing i'm worried about jay i'm worried that tell me she's will, will get sick of me that there, there will be a saturation uh an oversaturation of habibi no that's too the there there's that's never gonna happen no never gonna happen i feel like it could happen and that's i mean it I could mean. It could, but yeah. you got you got me to come here every week, so you could, uh, so I could uh, lick their assholes and uh, <laughs> cleanse cleanse their souls. No, but I mean, like for real though, like you know, some people kind of they go out there into like the. Um, but I think I think your hashing out is important because I think it's more professional and it's more like you get like really good interviews, like you interviewed. Uh, Fuck, I forget his name. That old guy. What's Jeff his name? Sessions. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think, I think it's important. It's very, um, uh, very. I don't know if I can really take credit for it or not. I don't think I will. But um, he didn't win after 
that. No, but I'm just saying you still got that interview. Yeah, I mean, no. I know you he didn't win after it because you cursed him, but hopefully that's not going to stop other yeah. people from getting getting onto it. You know what I mean? And I did and, interview uh, Martha McSally. She, if she doesn't win, <laughs> we could say that the hashing it out curse is real. <laughs> Oh, Faye, you're too generous. Thank you. Oh, Faye. God. Thank you, Faye. 100% sure I'm enjoying glasses wearing Siraj and Jay. I didn't imagine that right tonight. <laughs> Can we have some essentially clean content next week, please? What do you mean by essentially clean content? 100%. 100%. Like no cursing or like no no talking about like people being horny on main. Right. Or whacking, them off, whacking themselves off. I mean, we could try to be clean. <laughs> Um, uh, I'll give it my best shot. I'll try to twitch all of that stuff out. So when we come here, I'm, I'm more clean. Siraj is Q with the interview with Jeff LMAO. Uh, <laughs> You're QAnon. Am I QAnon? Is That'd that be wild. If I was, if I, if I didn't even realize it, if I had like a split personality disorder, uh, no, there's Faye. She's like she's saying like no sex stuff for just say 15 yeah. minutes. Okay. We could we could maybe do that for the opener and a couple a couple of things, but I mean we can't stay when when Fuzzy's point. mom walks in, like it's hard for me not to for my mind not to go there. Yeah. But yeah, here's the thing. I I know we were talking about big tech censorship. I really want to like get this out there and put this mm -hmm. out in the universe because it's important to me. And that is the role of the list because people have come to me all the time about, you know, they think the list is great. And like, I sort of like hype it up beyond belief saying like the list works, you know, everybody, know, everybody gets the joke, but there are some people who don't get the joke and this <laughs> that's is really for them because I put people on the list. It doesn't matter what their political beliefs are. Mm -hmm. and i do it out of a place of sometimes love sometimes dunking but really it is a place in which i care for that individual and i'm trying to encourage debate not not silence it because every time say for example i put president trump on the list mm -hmm. i get a lot of replies from my from the from my followers, I wouldn't say they're necessarily Habibis because, you know, there's this, you know, the Habibis watching this, the, the, the watching Habibi Power Hour, your Habibis. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the people who, who follow you, you and me pretty closely, I'd say they're Habibis. They're part of the, you know, Discord server. They're part of uh, our Twitch. They're, you know, play mm -hmm. among us with us. Um, they get the joke. I get followers all the time and be like, nah, it's not list worthy. Um, and like, you're fucking crazy wanting to like silence president Trump, um, <laughs> who <laughs> has had tweets taken down because obviously he's violated Twitter terms of service. Right. People call that big tech censorship. I am not encouraging big tech censorship with the list. The list is a place where I encourage debate. I don't respond to everyone because I want people to get their opinions out and I don't, I want to be, you know, I think of like Nicole Hannah Jones, who really in many ways, uh, oh, and Jennifer Rubin and Elon Musk, basically mm -hmm. anyone who is a reply guy who just like constantly responds to their followers, um, who like troll them. Like you don't have to respond to every single one. You respond to a few. Right. I have like a few, a few rules about like responding to some of them, uh, like really going nuclear on them. And usually a lot, pretty much essentially. 100% of the time it has to do with them going after my family or sometimes and sometimes my faith, but mostly family, most of your family. And so I went nuclear on one, one Excuse me. Twitter troll like a week and a half ago. And, um, it was, it was so creepy because they just like, they like almost knew way too much about me like really stalkerish type shit oh yeah especially like after knowing your brother that comment he made about your brother and stuff like that as yeah, well like, like that, that was that was yeah, overboard yeah it's just like 
that was like so and like they let it off with no disrespect which i'm pretty sure you meant the disrespect <laughs> oh yeah no <laughs> absolutely that's why he went there and that's why why he said things and the way yeah. he said it um so i mean actually you know what? i'll pull it up on on twitter give me one second habibis i'll find it um because i want the habibis to be in the loop on this because it was it was just weird. Uh, like I basically went full. Um, I went full J. Ah, uh, here we go. Give me one second while I pull this up. You're all okay. All right. So this was the tweet. Oh, um, yeah. Let me just minimize that. So this was, I, I put, again, that Delaware Republican Senate bitch on the list um, for tweeting, most third world migrants cannot assimilate into civil societies. Prove me wrong. To which I gave her the, uh oh, you're on the list, changed my mind. And uh, then this guy, Benny Gad, who I don't know, and I'm probably spending way too much time talking about it. Um, but, you know, this is this is stuff that happens in, my, in, in online. And the Habibis who haven't been following and want to know what happened. This is what mm -hmm. happened. So this guy responds, no offense, but your Muslim father forced your American mom to convert to Islam and become a virtual house slave. That's not assimilation. And on top of that, your brother is an Islamic extremist who wants to destroy Israel and was hired by the Obama State Department for that purpose. So, of course, I just responded, no, no offense, but go fuck yourself. So, um, that happened on the weekend. You know, uh, what's interesting is that I did not get, I did not uh, get uh, yelled at by, by work. So that was fun. <laughs> so I can say I actually, I, uh, you know, win-win scenario here. Yeah. Plus, if anyone that, you know, would come after me, uh, after my family, I think they would probably understand. And if I got fired for something like that, there would be hell to pay for um, basically my former boss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if I got fired for that? That would be fucking shit. That so, would be really shit. Yeah. Anyways, so wait, so Nick asks. Wait, I like how he changed it to yeah, Nick. It <laughs> it just, instead of N Miller, it's all just Nick. He so we don't have to say from Nate N. Muller to Nick, so that it's not Nick Nate Muller. <laughs> we know it's still Nate. Like it doesn't change anything. Thank you, Nate. We know it's Nate. Thanks, Thank Nate. You. Thank you, Nate. Um, but yeah, I have been yelled at by work for my tweets. Um, and that's why they're much more tame now. Um, <laughs> that's you'll get. Of course, you'll get the eventual spicy take um, that happens at night. That's why you get Siraj after hours. The spiciest tweets come late. Hold on one second. Just one second. He was looking at me, and I couldn't. I couldn't ignore him. Oh, look at him! He's ready. Look at him. Look at him. He needs anyway. to throw that loving. Um. So that's one thing. Um, Ernie, why are you covering up my my face? What's up, bud? Um. Anyways, oh, sorry. It's really hard to operate with my left hand. Sorry, Ernie. I don't want to yell in your face. Sorry, buddy. Okay. <laughs> Let me pull this closer. You get some Ernie ASMR. Come on. Anyways, um, so you know this kind of went off the rails, but it's okay because we're going to be streaming tomorrow night, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I don't think we uh, are we going to do an HBH 
afterwards too, or we're we just gonna do the stream? No, let's just do the stream because I gotta prep a script afterwards and do a debate wrap afterwards. Okay. So let's just answer some questions that. and talk to the Habibis because um tomorrow is gonna be another shit show. Right. And also, honestly, if any of you guys are on Discord, just follow me and uh we can play uh play online. We need to start you a server, Jabibi. Yeah. In the meantime, you can join my Discord and right. join my server if I can find it. Give me one second. You're gonna have to uh, teach me how to do that stuff too, because I'm still learning um, Discord and stuff. And and fuzzy, while well, you're looking for that, fuzzy asks a question: What did you do to get sent to your room tonight? <laughs> Were you allowed to eat dinner first? Nice to see you. Were who wears who wears the pants? <laughs> you five three lib. No, the thing is, is that we moved and uh, we're trying to find a, uh, we're in an apartment, a one bedroom apartment. So we're trying to find a, a nice, good place for us to, to, to do the streaming and, you know, my Twitch stuff and all that kind of stuff. And um, your mom just thought it was in the way in the living room fuzzy. So I'm in the bedroom and plus this makes it easier. So now she knows once this is done to just come here ass up. <laughs> that's the, this is the bed fuzzy the bed it's where the that's, magic happens that's the bed me and your mom go and do the naughty stuff this, <laughs> this is where i eat your mom's ass <laughs> drew zirkley ass or drew zirkel i'm gonna say drew zirkel like steve urkel <laughs> question for siraj are you friends with spencer neal at all used to write with him at my previous gig and I know he's at the examiner right now. You know, Spencer, that's a very familiar name. I'm going to look him up right now. Spencer Neal. Neal. Well, it's also important to say you work in different sections from the magazine as well, right? Oh, I don't. Oh, I, yeah, I know who, I know. Who's, I actually, I don't think I've formally met Spencer. Um, might have been a very brief exchange. The examiner can get kind of big and um, people, I wouldn't say it's clicky, but there's not really a whole lot of time to interact with people in the last time that um, I think anybody got together was right before COVID. So anyways, but it's all good. Also, sorry, Fuzzy. Didn't mean for it to be a bit much. I had, I honestly had like seven, uh, seven, uh, what's it called? White claws. I finished a, a whole six pack of mangoes and I'm on the, uh, what's it called now? The, uh, black raspberry or blackberry or whatever it is. But I love you, fuzzy. You're one of the great Habibis and <laughs> sorry if I took it a little too far. Cade Noel has a question. Siraj, have you ever put Pedro Gonzalez on the list? I have not. Um, and I don't know if I'll start, but, uh, I mean, I haven't followed him or seen any of his, first uh, of all, he's not a blue check, so he has a higher threshold to meet. Oh, uh, right. So, but every now and then, if he has a really viral tweet, that's really bad, then maybe I'll consider it. Tally 76 says, Siraj has been friends with Richard Spencer for a while based on their mutual hatred for Israel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, here comes the, the, the salt licks. Oh, man. Um, Steve S. Siraj, can you put Pedro Gonzalez on the list? I'll consider it. Be, Nate BBS, Raj, do you ever consider leaving the East Coast? That depends. If my mm -hmm. wife really wants to move back to California, because my wife is from uh, Orange County, then I will go with her. Because I could do, I could do this. Thankfully, I could do this anywhere. Thankfully. You should, you should come down here to to California. I actually live in Orange County right now, so you should yeah. definitely, definitely get down here. Yeah. Wonder Kimmy asks, when is the next Tansu occasion for you? Uh, if I'm being honest, I think election night. <laughs> you should definitely wear it election night. 
for sure. I think I would have to wear a full on tan suit election night. Yeah, we're doing it. Jay, you can wear a turban and uh, a corta. I'm going to wear, I'll wear the turban. Yeah, wear the turban and a corta and I'll wear my tan suit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't wear a corta, I'll wear a distachia. I so I need to order it. I'll order it right now from Amazon. Yeah. Last um, one I have is in Dubai. I actually, I really do like the West Coast though. Um, it's great. Weather is great. I mean, I, I mean, the, the, the time... I think- Honestly, the thing I think I like most is that is Pacific time. Right. And the, 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 if you're a journalist or if you're into DC news and, and all that kind of stuff, I mean, you wake up and they're already like three hours ahead. Well, in your case, you already wake up at 12, one o'clock PM. So it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> <laughs> essentially hold on before we get to it it. (laughs) time to just down this baby do it i'm done i'm i'm finished (laughs) with with my white claws i need to pee so bad (laughs) okay well we're wrapping up here habibis i'm starting to lose my vision (laughs) (laughs) um so fey asks are you doing any interviews around election time so i have two more episodes of hashing it out coming out this week i was hoping that this week's episode was actually going to be coming out next week because that's with ryan gerdusky and uh he's a good friend and um the the la the this these next two episodes is like part of like a it's a two-part episode in the sense that i talked to someone on the left and talked to someone on the right about what's really at stake in this election and not like the you know like everybody talks about how like this election is the most consequential election like no, tell me fucking why like i i want to hear like the, the they policy. said that last they said it last yeah they election. said it every single election every fucking election it loses its meaning after a while exactly like after so that. um the thing is so i had i had ryan on earlier this week we we talked uh kind of at length for like o- almost an hour really about this stuff really good conversation um and i had an interview scheduled on tuesday with dr jason johnson who's a professor in politics and journalism at morgan state university it's in it's in maryland and uh, he's also an msnbc political analyst big liberal guy and just to give you sort of like a teaser of that interview and the reason why it's not coming out this week instead of next week uh and or the reason why it's not coming out this week is because i fucked up the zoom and it only recorded like four minutes of our conversation oh shit i was so pissed off by that so we were scheduled to friday but just to give you an idea and this is something to, to, to consider and this will probably be brought up in the episode um is that his thought on what's at stake in this election is that this could be the last election like the last election ever the fuck yeah I'm, oh, I'm, like like trump is going to be president for, for life huh like trump is going to be president for life what, what are you talking about know. the last election like gonna, it, it, gonna... depending on what's going to happen the the world is the united states is going to be what dissolved I don't know, but that's weird. And a serious question. How many lockers has Siraj been shoved in? (laughs) That's a good question. Oh, shit. I was bullied a lot, actually, as a kid, mostly in middle school. Were Uh, you here in middle school or in Pakistan? I was in Pakistan. I was bullied a lot there. And in Connecticut, not so much. Only, Only in, like sparingly but a lot of it had to do with because of like muslim and 9 11 was fresh so yeah so i definitely i definitely got shoved into plenty of lockers but you know what's good is that um because i was bullied as a kid i have really thick skin so like nothing really gets to me that much unless they go after my family that's when i usually lose it so right yeah um but what about there, you? There, How many lockers were you shoved into? 
Or were you uh, sort of a no, badass? No. <laughs> no, I was just like in between, you know, the cool kids and the and the nerds and stuff. Like I wasn't really picked on or anything or didn't pick on anyone either. Um, but then I didn't really go to school here in the United States because there's somebody asking, I think Jane was asking if I was from Dubai and it's like, no, I, I'm, I'm actually from Oklahoma, but I moved to Dubai when I was about 10, uh, not Dubai itself, but the UAE, Abu Dhabi, uh -huh. and then, uh, from there. And as I was in Abu Dhabi, I wasn't really picked on. No. I see. Fuzzy asks, was the interview before or after you made out with Ryan on the love seat? <laughs> Actually, I made out with his dog and he made out with Ernie. So you got that all wrong. But... <laughs> Kai. But... Okay. Wonder Kimmy says, I'm not, I am not into Ryan Gerdusky, huh? Too Trumpy for me, too, at Steve. Um, I love Ryan and I, Ryan is the reason why I work at the examiner. He's the one who got me a job there. And um, I, he and I have been friends ever since uh, 2016. I had him on a few times as a guest when I was at um, a small media startup called global voice hall that no longer exists. And um, he was sort of like my right leaning conservative friend who I would bring on to, you know, comment on certain news or, you know, campaign stuff. And, uh, yeah, he saw that I could, you know, edit video and that's what they were looking for and I could write and edit. Um, and so he brought me into red alert politics initially in 2016. And eventually I joined the examiner because red alert politics folded, but they didn't want to leave. They don't want to lose me. So mm -hmm. that's kind of, so I owe a lot to Ryan. He's been a good friend ever since. So, um, but yeah, he and I don't always uh, agree on things, but I learn a lot from him. And that's how I kind of treat all of my friends who have different views is that I just try to understand what it is that they think and why they think the way they think. Right. Um, because there's no reason to like get into fights with certain people unless they're like, unless they're like truly being like bigoted or racist or like, uh, like a, you know, having like very ignorant or, you know, hateful statements that they're making. Mm -hmm. um, that's when like, is a good time to push back. But if they're just like, if you're just like discussing policy or so something like that, then obviously there's not, there's not a reason to just like tell somebody to go fuck themselves. Although I tell Ryan to go fuck himself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you tell me to go fuck myself too. Yeah. Or like an ass. And I, I, and Jay, I tell you to go fuck yourself all the time. Right. <laughs> so, um, anyways, uh, Habibis, unless you don't have any other questions, I think this is a good time to, to leave it since uh, we got um, we got a big night tomorrow night with, uh, the, with the debate. With a debate. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to be trying to stream every day after that. And um, Jay, I know you're going to be trying to do I'm I know you're going to try to do Among Us. I, I would love to try to to join. join up too, but um, we'll figure okay. something out. I mean, I think I honestly think you can mirror it on your from your phone onto okay. your onto your uh, MacBook. We'll, well, we'll find out. out. We'll yes, sir. Out. All right, Habibis. Well, y'all been great. Thank you for joining us on another Habibi Power Hour. I'm Siraj Hashmi. I'm Jack Kobe. I'm lit as fuck, and this is Ernie. <laughs> That's what I'm we'll liking. see you tomorrow night, Habibis. Essentially. Essentially. 100%. 100%. Peace.